Hello everybody and welcome. Good afternoon, the International Relations and Cooperation Department of Universidad Católica San Paulo gives you the warmest welcome to the sixth session of Interconectados. Um, I am Emily Walker. I am a English teacher at the Universidad Católica San Pablo Language Center. I'm of a French and British nationality, and I've been teaching at the Language Center for the past three years. So, first of all, let me tell you a little bit more about um, this event and the events prior to this one. Interconectados is a meeting place with our students, teachers and alumni, and in general, members of our um, international community who are interested in learning about academic destinations offered by UCSB, thanks to its international partners, such as the ones that we have with us today, and um, scholarship opportunities for higher studies in general. Our goal is to promote the culture of these countries and allow attendees to dream and get excited about undertaking an academic and cultural exchange, obviously as soon as it's possible and, and safe to do so. Um, to prepare to do it or to apply for scholarships, you must have information, identity, and know the destination, and in many cases, learn the language. So every week we have been virtually traveling to one or more countries. Today, um, I'm excited to announce that we are doing it towards Austria with Ingrid Domersnes, who is the Internationalization and Mobility Coordinator at FH Joannium University of Applied Sciences in Austria. And after that, we will be traveling towards Germany with Nadine Hackmann, who is the Head of International Office, and Manfred Meyer, who is the GIPE program coordinator, and they are both representing Westfalian University of Applied Sciences. After these presentations, we will also hear two testimonies from our students from the Business Administration School. First, um, Alberto Lori, who is the Ernst Mach Grant awardee, um, who will travel to FH Joannium next year, and also Edwin Eddy Machaca who was one of the participants of the GIPE program first edition. So I hope you will enjoy this session. Um, before starting, we just want to share some recommendations. The duration of these presentations will be approximately 25 minutes. Okay, and then we will have a suitable space to questions, which you can make in the chat or using the raise your hand icon. Okay, so if you have any questions, please make a note. You will have a chance to ask them at the end. So first I'm going to um, give the stage to Ingrid Domesnes, who will speak to us um, from Austria. Go ahead, Ingrid. Thank you, thank you, Emily. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Great. So first of all, thank you for letting me present here. I'll try to keep it short because I don't have a lot of time and I'll try to, in that short time, present as much of the nice sides of our university as possible. I will start sharing my screen now. Um, I hope that you can see it. Just give me a small heads up. Can, can you see my screen? Yes, okay. yes we can. Very good. Okay, so first of all, welcome to FH Joinium. It's a difficult name to say in English. In German, you say FH Joanneum. We are located in Austria, in the middle of Europe, south in Austria, in Graz, Kapfenberg, and Bad Gleichenberg. Uh, first of all, I'll provide you with an introduction to our school and our international relations services and services in general. And then at the end, I'll present the mobility and funding options that we have. We hope that we'll have we will have some of your students from um, San Pablo coming during the spring, and I hope that even more students will come in the years to come. So first of all, uh, FH Junium, it is a University of Applied Sciences founded in 1995. We have 27 bachelor's programs and 22 master's programs in six departments, 
we have a total of approximately 4,300 students. Um, we also have about 700 employees and 900 lecturers and more than 300 partner universities all over the world. We're located, as you can see on the map, we're located pretty much in the heart of Europe. Our main campus is in Graz, which is the second largest city in Austria. And then we have two campuses in Kapfenberg and in Bad Gleichenberg, both smaller cities in the province of Styria in Austria. Graz is um, a city famous for science and culture. It is the second biggest city in Austria and has a population of about 270,000. In addition to that, we have about 50,000 students. We have the Joanneum University of Applied Sciences, but we also have a main university, a medical university, teacher training university, and in a university of arts. Um, it is a city of design and it is also a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site. Um, I've attached a link to a video about Kratz under here. We will not have time to watch it right now, but I will send out the presentation and I hope that some of you will look into the video afterwards. So our services, the International Relations Services, we are divided into five branches, so the culturalize, socialize, mobilize, localize, and customize branches. Um, our culturalize branch is a um, very social branch where you can get to know Austrian culture, but also other cultures in our tandem program. And in our language courses, we offer a wide range of language courses, not only German language, but also other common languages. Um, we also have a tandem program where you can sign up and be assigned a buddy of your choice and you would teach your mother tongue or other languages, so in most of your cases Spanish, to a person who would teach you maybe German or English or a completely different language such as French or Croatian, depending on your interests. Um, there are also tandem events such as tandem cooking and tandem outings where you can um, explore the region together with your buddies and other students. We also have cultural diversity events um, where you can present your home country and you can also listen to presentations about other countries. And we have a, about 250 incoming exchange students per year. Um, 65% approximately are from European countries and approximately 35 from outside of Europe, from the US, America, South America, Asia, Africa, and Australia and New Zealand. Um, we offer, for incoming students, um, we offer assistance in the field of administration, but also scholarship and funding. Uh, we offer an orientation program in the beginning of every semester where you can get to know all the other exchange students, um, where you can learn German and take part in social programs and where you can, yeah, have a lot of fun. Uh, we offer a, a buddy program where you can have a buddy and a tandem partner assigned to you. And we offer a wide range of intercultural events as well as courses. And also for those who need it, we offer academic assistance if you need help selecting your courses um, or if you're having any troubles during your stay. Right, so here are a few pictures from the aforementioned events. You can see that we have pub quizzes, karaoke nights, parties, um, ice skating, bowling nights, or hiking. Um, and we're always very open to suggestions. So the students who are here, they can suggest an activity and we're happy to take it up in our repertoire. And yeah, the orientation packages there, um, they are three weeks. They are mandatory. The last week is mandatory for all students and the first two are optional. Um, in the first weeks you have a language course, a German language course, course, which is optional but strongly recommended as a lot of courses are taught in German 
and you will need some some German for your everyday life here. And then we also offer uh, culture and fun events such as such as outings and games, pub quizzes, and so on. Um, we'll also help you with all your administrative tasks during these weeks. And for those of you who will be coming to FH Junium, you will receive information about the orientation packages from me very soon. Here are a few photos from some of our other events, uh, trips to Vienna and to Budapest, which we also arrange on a regular basis. Not right now, unfortunately, but when the situation is sta stable again, we hope to take these activities up. And since you cannot all come here or be here, I thought I'd show you a few photos of our international office uh, and the office area, which is designed by our students. You can see it's colorful and with a lot of design elements that our students have designed for us. We have drawings and artwork everywhere. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, and as you can see, it's it's a place for students to feel well during their stay. Um, and now to the more um, exciting part for you, to the possible mobilities. Um, we have the Ernst Mach scholarships. They are for students at Austrian Universities of Applied Sciences, such as FH Junium and they, it is possible to apply every year. And if you are accepted, you will receive a scholarship of 1,050 euros every month for the duration of your stay, which is a relatively large sum of money which can cover all of your stay, including travel. Um, we will send out the call for application for the next year, so for the um, academic year 2021 and 2022 during this winter um, and I hope that you some of you will apply you will receive guidance if you want to apply by me um, it is an extensive application process it's it's pretty complicated but no don't worry I'll do my very best to help you and we've had a high success rate in the past and I know that some of your students among others Alberto who will speak in a bit he has been awarded a scholarship and can also help you with the formalities of the process. Um, from the University of San Pablo, we accept students to our global business program. So we're mostly open for management and or economic students. Um, and you can find more information about our global business program under this link. It is a business program taught entirely in English for international students. And it offers a very wide range of management and economic topics with lecturers from all over the world. Um, and I hope some of you will be interested in applying to that. So as I was told to keep it short, this is it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me now if we have time or via email at any time. I'm very happy to answer all the questions you might have. And I also Hope to see some of you here in Austria during the next years. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ingrid. I hope that you will have some students contacting you um, with questions. You had a brilliant presentation and I miss Austria. I miss it so much. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, so coming up next, we have Nadine Hackman, um, who is the head of international office of the GIP and um, of um, head of international office of Westphalian University of Applied Sciences. Sorry, stumbled on my words there for a second. No, it's all right. It's all right. It's difficult names today. I realize <laughs> you get quite a few names to memorize, but we're we're getting there. So, um, welcome, Nadine from. Um, Westphalian University of Applied Sciences. We're looking forward to hearing your presentation. I'll let you take the stage. Thank you very much, uh, Emily, for introducing me. Um, as we're speaking about 
difficult names. Yes, we also, as the FH Joanneum, we also have a difficult name. Uh, it's called Westfälische Hochschule. Um, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, today. And it's a pleasure for me to uh, give you a brief insight uh, about our university. I've tried to share my screen now. Um, Emily, could you give a short feedback? Are you seeing it? Yes, we can see your screen. If you could maybe put your presentation in full screen, that'd be perfect. There we go. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much. So I'll uh, start right away because uh, we're a bit short in time. Uh, I'm going to take you to a little trip to our university. First of all, um, I'd like to tell you that we have three campuses uh, at our university. Um, our campus in Gelsenkirchen is our main campus, which you see in the middle. And then we have our campuses in Bocholt and in Recklinghausen. We have around 10,000 students in total. And our campus in Gelsenkirchen is the biggest one where we have 5,000 students on our campus. And it's also the biggest city with uh, 260,000 inhabitants. Um, here you see the building. This is our main building where my office uh, is located. And uh, we are quite young university. We were founded in 1992, so it's all still quite new. The buildings here, and also uh, when you see our campus in Bocholt, which is this one, we are a bit proud of it because uh, we call it our water castle because we have a lake around it, and it looks quite a bit fancy during nighttime when the lights are turned on. And uh, we have 2,000 students on this campus, um, but the city is slightly smaller. We have. 73,000 inhabitants there, and uh, it's also uh, a quite green area. Uh, last but not least, we have our campus in Recklinghausen, which is also around 2,000 uh, students, a bit more even, and the city uh, is somehow in the middle with uh, 100,114 uh, um, inhabitants. So you probably have not yet heard about uh, the cities of Gelsenkirchen, uh, Recklinghausen, uh, and Bochol, so I'm going to show you where we are. Uh, we like to say that it's, uh, we are in the heart of Europe, um, as you see uh, on the map. Um, the white parts are Europe, which is uh, located uh, around us. And then we have the gray part, uh, the light gray part, which shows Germany. And the darker gray part uh, that shows the country of North Rhine-Westphalia. Uh, you see um, the um, green part in the middle, that's the area where our cities with our campuses in Gelsenkirchen, Bocholt and Recklinghausen are. Uh, and we call it the Ruhr area. Um, it is called like that after a river that goes through, uh, through the area. And uh, around this river are a lot of very big cities. Uh, so it's very metropolitan area there. And uh, here you might see a little better. Um, um, which cities are close by. Maybe you've heard uh, about Düsseldorf or maybe uh, here down there also um, about Cologne. They are all very close by. So you could say that there are really many big cities around us. You also see um, our campus uh, right on top with the green mark. Um, uh, it's very close to the Dutch border um, and Belgium is also not very far. Um, so we have um, um, 200 kilometers to Amsterdam, we say. Um, it takes two hours by train to go from Gelsenkirchen to Amsterdam. It takes, let's say, three or four hours to go to Paris by train, and you're quickly in Munich. So it's really um, quite in the center of Europe. Um, we are a University of Applied Sciences. I'm not sure if you are familiar um, with the differences between a classical university in Germany and a university of applied sciences. Uh, the main difference is that uh, a classical university has the goal to educate uh, for research, whilst uh, a university of applied sciences um, has the goal to educate junior management staff. So we really educate for industry and we uh, want our students to have leadership positions in, uh, in companies uh, and in industry. That also means that we have a focus on uh, hands-on learning. We have a lot of laboratories and uh, we focus very much uh, on 
doing things by yourself and not just uh, learning theoretically, but uh, having the chance to try out quite early on during your studies so that when you finish your studies, you are able to work in a company right away without spending much time to really uh, learn how to practice your skills. Okay, our faculties um, at our university are engineering, computer science, uh, natural science, business studies. That these, are, these four are our main uh, study uh, programs. Um, engineering is quite a big focus. Uh, and we also have a lot of interdisciplinary programs, uh, like for example, business engineering or called industrial engineering, or also uh, business informatics. We also have study programs in law and uh, journalism. So if you're interested in these programs, we also have exchange possibilities here. So what can you do with us? Um, the one thing is that you can come for an exchange semester to us and spend uh, a whole semester, which usually is around five or six months uh, with our university. Um, you would study in English. Uh, we have some uh, programs where we have English uh, language uh, um, uh, teaching. So uh, you will be able uh, to study in English and you don't have to know German for all the programs that we have. Um, I know that coming to Germany might be a bit difficult at the moment and we're not sure how the situation is going to develop. But the good news is that we also have a program called GUIDE. It's called Global Intercultural Project Experience and it is uh, a blended mobility, uh, which means that you spend just a short time abroad, if it's possible, um, and uh, you can learn interculturally during your whole semester whilst you are at home uh, on a virtual basis. That's what we've done last year. We've had um, a group of students and we also have um, a student with us who's going to tell you a bit about his experience. Um, he they had um, a project um, um, from a real company they were working on um, and they really managed this year, even if, that was, if it was not possible uh, to come uh, in person to Germany or neither for our students to come to, uh, to another country. Um, but um, they had the opportunity to work together on a virtual basis. So the good news is uh, that we have not only our university uh, involved, um, we have four countries involved in this project, uh, and not only four countries, but also four continents even. Our partners uh, are from uh, Peru, of course, from, uh, from your university. They are from Namibia, Indonesia, and uh, from our university, from Germany. So it's a real diverse project. Um, and all these people from these universities, which could be one of you, uh, forms one, uh, one team to work on this one pr project that comes from a, from a real company. So it's a really a great opportunity um, to work together and to learn um, how to communicate in intercultural teams, which is probably something you will all need uh, when you finish your studies and when you uh, head for your first job. Um, and it's a truly global intercultural experience. You have the chance to meet other people from different continents and cultures and to really make friends. And you can work together on a real life project so you really see the outcome. Um, I think that was also nice for our group of students that we had now uh, to really see that the work they did uh, is used by a, by a real uh, client. You will receive credits for your academic record and you will also receive a certificate of achievement at the end of the project. And uh, the very good news is also that we are in the happy position to have scholarships to uh, fund you. Uh, and I think now I'm not going to talk much more about it because we have um, uh, uh, our specialist here, uh, Manfred, he's head of this, uh, this guide project. And I'm going to hand over to Manfred. Uh, to uh, yeah, give the stage to him so that he can tell you a bit more about the project that uh, took place this year and about the project that's going to take place next year. Okay, Nadine. Do you hear me well? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. It's a great, uh, great pleasure to be with you tonight. I mean, it's uh, uh, all, all, almost night here. 
But uh, that's very usual in this project um, because with this project spans over 12 time zones, just to mention. So um, as we have Peru on board, we have Namibia, we have Germany, we have Indonesia. So uh, the normal meetings uh, require students and staff from uh, Peru to be in the meeting at 7 a.m. Okay, I don't know whether still you want to, to, to join that project. So it's an early morning project for the meetings for Peruvians and the Indonesian partners. They will be on the meetings in the evening then. So as I said, it's a pleasure for me to present this. It's a pleasure to me, uh, for me to um, be in this uh, conference with so many uh, colleagues and also uh, students from uh, UCSP. I have been to UCSB three times now, and I all, uh, every time I very much enjoyed. So there is hopefully a few minutes left uh, for um, giving you an idea what really takes place inside this project. Uh, to make things easy, we just call it Gype. So sometimes it's just like a verb. Yeah, let's Gype, you, you, you have seen on the slide. So it means this global intercultural project experience, and that's really basically what it is. So it gives you an intercultural project experience working together with peers from other universities uh, around the globe. And as Nadine already introduced, it's mostly done online. So that of course fits well in, in the current times, but also we still hope to bring together students. So students from Peru and from all the other universities for a two week a spring school at our university. So very briefly, um, I mean, uh, Edwin will probably uh, also tell you um, something from his perspective. So very quickly through these slides, what we did in the first run, which was carried out from uh, February to July this year. So we developed a, a portal for um, a parastatal institution in Namibia, so a real client with real requirements uh, coming, um, contacting our friends in Namibia saying we need some support for this, for this project. Um, unfortunately, we have we, we, uh, needed to do all the meetings through Zoom, online meetings. You here see a, sc a screenshot of the final meeting when we presented the system to the client. Um, maybe there is somewhere Edwin on this um, on this uh, screenshot or on the other page because we had more than 30 students in that in that uh, team. And um, so at the end, finally, uh, Nadine. At the end, Nadine. Yes. <laughs> um, no, one back, please. Okay. So at the end, we were able to deliver what the client needed. So it was quite a successful project. So the students from all over the world, they together developed a website, a web portal for a real client that will go live. It's just a matter of time because some, uh, we, we still hope that we can bring our German students to that site to hand over the system officially, but it's working, it has been deployed. So that was the project we finished already. Now much more interesting, the next project, Nadine, yeah, so that will be a different project. The other one was very much IT related, but the new project we will carry out for a Echo Spirit Center in Indonesia. And it will support the client with developing new business model, developing new offerings, a web portal, of course, and lots of fancy stuff to support Echo tourism education for this client located uh, two hours away from Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. Just a, a few slides about that to give you uh, some pictures, some impression um, of, the, yeah, of the client. And the next slide is also summarizing that there are as well business tasks, technology development, maybe some fancy things like smart farming, uh, virtual reality, developing games, all these subtasks uh, may be part of the project. I listed some important dates here. Maybe later on in the discussion, we will have a chance to, um, or I will have a chance to, to uh, answer questions about that. So you, we have the ability to give scholarships for up to eight students from your university. And um, that will give the funding to 
attend the uh, spring school, which will take place in the second half of April. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, hear from my Peruvian colleagues that they got a lot of very good, interesting, interested applications. And then finally to see uh, uh, lots of students uh, from uh, Peru on this project next year. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, um, Manfred. That was a very interesting presentation. Thank you, Nadina. Thank you, Manfred. Just to remind everyone, Nadina and Manfred were talking, uh, were speaking about the Westphalian University of Applied Sciences, and Manfred just told us about the GAIP program, which I think sounds absolutely fascinating. So thank you very much. Um, and so after these two brilliant um, presentations, it's now time to hand over the stage to our two students who will be giving one of which will be give, one of whom will be giving a personal testimony of his experience, and the other talking about his expectations. So first up, from the School of Business Administration, um, we have Alberto Lori, um, who is the Ernst Mach Grant awardee. That means that he will be travelling to FH Ioannium next year. Alberto, are you with us, and are you ready to to speak? Yes, I am, Emily. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your introduction. Um, so I would like to summarize my speech in two parts. I'll be starting with my experience, uh, this is by the life experience, and then get into the, my Ernst Mach Grant uh, experience by the, how the application was and the whole process of it. Uh, start saying that I'm a business management student at a university in San Pablo in, in Arequipa. I'm 23 years old. And one of the things I like to start saying is that my experience starts back in Austria when I first went uh, at 2015 uh, with Rotary Group for about 10 months. What I did there was to uh, learn some of your experience so of the people that uh, live in Austria, how develop, how treat each other, how your environment was, and all of those things that I got to brought back with me that helped me perform the way I do, I believe has been a life-changing opportunity. Uh, from that point, I've been engaging in programs to get to the point where I was able to uh, be a, a good participant uh, to apply for a grant like this, which is the Ernst Mach Grant. Uh, so for that, uh, the application that I would like to talk about started in January, at uh, the mid of January, and as uh, Ingrid said, it was a quite interesting application due to the deadline we had from the day it was announced that we had almost two weeks. And for me, it was a great experience because we got to um, have all the paperwork uh, due to the fact that the communication we, we could put, put to work with FHIONM was really good. The feedback, the, the things we needed got to make us uh, things on time. Um, saying it ain't a hard uh, application, but a large one, because there's a whole bunch of paperwork, recommendations, and uh, soft genie to make it happen. Uh, from that point, I've got to wait some time to get the response back. And at the mid of August, I got the confirmation that I was going to be able to travel to Austria to take part in this amazing opportunity. Um, since then, I got to participate at the cultural evenings uh, with FHIONIM as a country presenter. I did it with 
a fellow friend of mine who's also going to, to Austria in, in at the next semester. So we could handle some information about how Peru is, how things uh, work here, and it was um, quite a nice experience. Uh, from that point, we have three more presentations to, to do and to listen, to get back and get some certificates. And that's a thing that I really like because we are not just going there to study, but we can let some of our culture there to enhance people to, to take part in these events as I would like to give to my fellow students in, in, in University San Pablo to, to try to, to give it a try to uh, win a grant like this because once you get uh, throughout this whole process, things get much better in a way of you trying to perform at your best and the way it feels every day when you do and you know what you do is uh, as when I was in Austria, a life-changing opportunity. Uh, for that, I also would like to say if anyone listening would be interested in making this application and go through all the steps, I'm really open to give a hand to everyone who's, who's aiming to go to, to study in Austria. And with that, I would like to also thanks for your time for listening to me. My name is Alberto Lori, and it's been a whole pleasure to take part in this event. Thank you very much, um, Alberto, for sharing this application um, experience with us. And I very much enjoyed what you said about, you know, not being afraid to taking a chance because I think that is really what this is about. You know, it's, it's not an easy process, you know, and um, there will be a lot of paperwork to go through, but you know, even as Ingrid said, you know, that should not put anyone off um, right. of, you know, trying. to have access to this wonderful experience. Experience was invaluable. To now invite um, Edwin to speak. Edwin Eddy um, Macheca. He, he will be telling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. So I would like to now invite um, Edwin to speak. Edwin was one of the participants of the GIPE program first edition. So he will be really able to give us some invaluable insight into the experience. Edwin, can you hear me? Yes. And um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So, okay, thank you. So I will start. Edwin. And my name is Edwin Eddy uh, Machaca. Uh, I'm, I'm studying business management at the University of Católica San Pablo in Peru. In this moment, I'm not in Arequipa. I'm in my native town, which is uh, Ayabiri in Puno. And I'm so happy to be here with you, with all of the professors, with teachers, with different classmates that I have in the university. And like my experience with Guy Project start at uh, December and November, like applying for this project, it was really important for me because uh, like the information for this program it, it was gave by my classmate mm -hmm. by science computer. So um, I was so happy for that. And after that, I decided I was in Mexico in this time at January because I also take, I took so uh, like the Harvard National Model United Nations, Latin America in Mexico. So I decided to apply for the guide project um, and, uh, since I was in Mexico. After that, I received like in January 25th, I, I remember uh, like, the, the, like the best, the best news of my life because it was, um, I, I was so happy for that. I was so, so surprised, so exciting about that because like to travel to, it was not only for travel to Germany, it was because I will practice my English. I will like communicate with different students from Namibia, for Germany, for Indonesia, 
like not only talking about like work or like about the project it it was about talking about like the life the culture the difference between mm -hmm. uh between our countries mm -hmm. and in response of that um i was so happy uh, after that uh, we start like for for familiarization program in february we uh, we have different meetings like talking about what they're going to do what is like the project uh, like a, a professor manfred said about the, this portal this service that we are going to create uh, at the beginning i was so nervous because it my it was my first time like working with different guys from all over the world and not only that because we are going to develop a new like a website uh, like a resource so it was really really difficult at the beginning for me but after that we like take another teams because at the after to work like in a group uh, we decided to work by teams in this case i was in the control team so i was working with uh, philip my classmate philip uh, in this moment is my friend and uh, with also with uh, working with my professor manfred professor uh, thomas with guys from like uh, i said from namibia from indonesia and we decided to create like a program for socialization which was on saturdays at 7 a.m it's it's really interesting that each each week i need to to waking up like at 7 a.m monday or tuesday or sometimes i like take uh, three meetings per week or four meetings because it was uh, we need to work together and those or the, like the communication is the most important here you need to practice with uh, with your classmates with your team and it was the most important thing for me and after that like on saturdays we decided to talk more about like our lives like sharing what is like the food in peru what is the food in indonesia like different things like some i remember um one meeting that i was in my native town so i decided to take photos to 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 like to record the mountains the lakes the different rivers and it was really interesting because they 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 say me like i would like to visit your country i would like to be part of your life and everything yes and at the final we decided to even if uh, in this moments uh appear like the covid uh, pandemic so uh, and everything was virtual at the final we decided to to have a communication uh, through uh, in this case whatsapp or in, in discord and uh, like we were talking or sharing different everything yes taking like pictures uh, or converse, uh, conversations and i was so happy for that after that it, it, this program like uh, this project take like took like four months since uh, january february march april then july because it was uh, because like the pandemic like it was a problem but it not uh, stop us yes and it was so so uh, interesting for me and one more time i'm so happy to be part of this program like working with all these students working with uh, professor manfred and my final words is like everything is possible if you want and let's get together one more time Thank you very much, Edwin. That was wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing this experience. I'm sure that every student listening right now has found it invaluable. And I'm so happy that you were able to take part in, in, in such a wonderful program. So um, thank you very much. So everyone, we have just heard from our two students from, I hope Man Manfred is giving you a, a thumbs up, <laughs> Edwin. So, um, we have just heard from two students, from Alberto and from Edwin. Thank you very much, boys. Um, the next person to speak to us is going to be Daniel Malvardida, and he is the Director of Business and Economic Sciences Department at Universidad Católica San Pablo. So, I will be giving him the stage so that he can speak to everyone next, and after that, we will be taking questions. Okay? So, um, Daniel? Thank you, Emily. Can you hear me well? I would like to invite all our students to apply for Guide. We've been meeting with the other colleagues from the other universities for a few months now. It's been challenging to meet at 7 a.m. every morning, but it's a very gratifying experience. I think Edwin 
transcribe very well what he learned, what he experienced during guide. It's a, I think it's a life-changing experience to engage in a project with students from other countries, other continents, and other programs. So I would like to encourage all the students from our university to apply for GAIP. Soon you will be hearing from our international relations office who will be sending the application invitation. Thank you, Emilia. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you very much, um, Benian. So, um, it is now time for the questions. So, just one indication, could I please ask all of the opponents to turn on their cameras for the questions? Okay, so, oh, Manfred has his, has his camera on already, thank you very much. Oh, and Nadina and, let's see, oh, and Ingrid also has her camera on. Fantastic. So let's go ahead with the first question. And this is a question that I'd like to extend both to FHA Yuanium and Beispiel University. We have a student asking, I'm currently in my last semester at the UCSP. Can I apply to any of these programs? So Nadina, Ingrid, Manfred. Um, I can answer for the NSMAH program. Unfortunately, in order to apply, you have to be enrolled in studies at your home university. But if you're planning to proceed with a master's degree, you can, of course, apply when you're in your master's. That would be the same for us in, uh, in Germany and also for the guide project, because it is also uh, one of our goals to give credits uh, for the course. So you will need to be enrolled in, whilst you are in Germany. Okay, thank you very much, um, Nadina and Ingrid. We then have another question, which is about the possibility of studying civil engineering. And I believe this question has been directed to, yes, to Ingrid for FH Yuanium. Ingrid, is there a possibility for students to come and study um, civil engineering at your institution? Um, there it is difficult to give a yes or no answer to that. The thing is, uh, with the University San Pablo, we have an agreement for business and economics. That doesn't mean that you cannot come as an engineering student, but it means that we have to check with the applicants. We have to check with the program if we have any spots open. The engineering program has to give priority to their partner universities, but if there are still some spots open, yes. And if you're studying engineering or something else, if you're studying, journalism or design or any other kind you're welcome to apply and to let me know and I will do my best to get as many of you in as possible but I, I can't guarantee anything but I, I would suggest that in these individual cases please just get in touch. Thank you very much and so you Ingrid you shared your email address um, earlier with us with our students would you be able maybe to share it again? in case anyone wasn't able to write it down? Yes, of course, I'll write it in the chat. I'll write my yep. personal email address and the email address of our international, international relations department. That would, be that would be brilliant. Thank you so much, Ingrid. And continuing on with the questions, this is a question I'd like to extend bo to both um, institutions. We have a student asking about mechatronic engineering. So Ingrid, Nadina, um, is that a possibility um, at your institution, studying mechatronic engineering? Yes, generally I can say that uh, for our guide project, uh, we are open to all disciplines because we're going to uh, develop um, different teams with different tasks. So the guide project is really open to all disciplines. And it, when it comes to, um, to studying for a whole exchange semester at our university, it depends a little bit. Uh, mechatronics would be, um, um, it would be possible, but we will have to check on the language skills uh, that are needed because we don't have uh, English classes in our mechatronics uh, study program. So if there's German knowledge, uh, we can, of course, organize also an exchange semester um, uh, for mechatronics. We do have the study program mechatronics, um, but you will need to have um, uh, German language skills. 
Thank you very much, uh, Nadina. And that's something that is quite important to keep in mind. You know, for some of the smaller, the more niche um, subjects, I suppose German would be quite essential. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Um, Ingrid, what about at your institution? Um, we don't have a mechatronics program, but we do have uh, similar programs. We have engineering programs and automotive engineering and aircraft engineering. Um, and we have, yeah, a variety of engineering um, disciplines that are similar to mechatronics. Um, it depends on whether we can find a good fit for your classes. So if you have any requirements from your home university, we would have to look into whether or not we can offer that. Um, and the same as Nadine just said with the classes in German, we offer a lot of classes in English on a master's level, but on the bachelor's level, we have a lot of classes in German. So it's easier to accommodate master's students in English. Thank you very much. And that, I think that's important for you know, everyone listening to, to take note. You know, masters could have more opportunities when it comes to um, studying these, these types of, of courses in English. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to our next question, we have a question from um, our student about the English certificates. This is a, a question I'd like to extend to both of you, Ingrid and Nadina. Which English certificate is needed to apply for this type of exchange? Uh, we do not require a specific English certificate. Any, anything goes. It's just important that we can tell from the certificate that you have a relatively high level, but we, we accept IELTS and Cambridge and TOEFL and all of the regular programs. And we also accept a written letter from your home university saying that you have a high level of English that you could follow classes. We normally require level B2 from the general European framework, um, which I think you also operate within Peru. Thank you very much, Ingrid. What about you, Nadina? That's actually uh, uh, quite the same for our university. We would also ask for a level of English uh, at a B2 uh, level, and uh, we accept all kinds of, uh, of um, official letters stating that you are fluent uh, in English, so IELTS and TOEFL, uh, of course, but it doesn't have to be one of these standardized uh, tests, it can also be uh, uh, a certificate from the language center at your university. Brilliant, thank you very much. So that might be quite reassuring for some students now to know that they don't necessarily um, have to take the TOEFL program. And if I can plug my own institution for just, just a moment, the UCSP Language Center, which can help you, which can help open doors to these types of, um, of programs. So thank you very much. Um, let's see, moving on to our next question. And we have a question about the Ernst Mach scholarship from our student called Karen, asking what does a scholarship include? So the Ernst Mach scholarship. Um, the scholarship includes a 1,050 euros every month that are free to spend the way you want to. Uh, there's not a special allowance for, for housing or for food. You have to budget the 1,050 euros yourself. Um, yeah, and that is what it includes. Uh, there is, as far as I know, as of today, there's no extra travel grant. So the 1,050 euros should also cover your travel. You can get it for up to 10 months. So that is 10,000 euros. Um, and you, the cost of living, it should be covered by that. Thank you very much. And yes, I can, I can confirm you know, as a European myself and having received an Erasmus grant myself, although it's not quite the same, it is designed to cover all of the basic costs in your living, food, um, transportation. Thank you very much. Um, we next have a question about GAIP. And I thought that I could maybe um, in, I can maybe direct this question to Nadina or to Manfred. Um, we have a student asking about GAIP, about asking um, when will the GAIP program enrollment be available? Yep, I can, I can respond to that and I already posted in the chat. So the plan is that the announcements and the invitations to, for submission of uh, applications will be out next, next month. 
So the idea is that the successful um, applicants will get informed before Christmas still. Thank you very much, um, Manfred. Um, let's see, moving on to another question that we have. We have a question from teachers um, who are asking, could you tell us more about masters opportunities at your universities. So again, I'd like to extend this question both to FH Ioannium and to um, Westphalian University, if you could tell us more about master's opportunities. Uh, we have one master opportunity for studying in, in English uh, um, for an exchange semester, which is our business engineering program. Uh, that would be a possibility for exchange. Uh, but generally, we have, of course have more masters in uh, almost all fields that I presented earlier with several engineering fields, also with informatics and uh, with uh, business studies, international management. We also have international programs. And um, if there's German knowledge, we are happy to take students into all of these programs. Uh, but for the English part, uh, it would be our business engineering study program that would be, uh, would be suitable. Okay, thank you very much, Nadina. Ingrid, would you like to tell us about master's sure. opportunities? Uh, we have quite a few master's program programs in English. Uh, we have a business program, we have some engineering degrees, um, and we have industrial management in English. Um, it does require a um, relevant bachelor's degree, so in a similar field. Um, and in Austria, Provermans have to get their documents legalized before applying. So that means that the embassy has to legalize the documents if you want to apply as a regular student. That does not apply for Ernst Mach grant holders, but it does apply if you want to spend your whole degree of studying here. So if you really want to spend both years. Um, at this point, we don't offer any English bachelor's degrees. Okay, thank you very much, um, Ingrid. So yes, important to, real, to, to keep in mind, you know, as an exchange student, legalizing those documents would not be necessary, but as a full-time student, um, proceedings in terms of application would be a little bit different. Thank you very much. Um, and then I see that we have a question for me about how to contact my institution. So um, I am, um, Everyone, I'm a, a, um, a teacher of English at the Language Center of San Pablo University. If you'd like to contact our institution, you can go onto the UCSP website and look for UCSP um, EDMS. And we would be happy to take you on um, as students. Um, we have a comment from my a wonderful academic coordinator in the chat. Um, so you can search for us in at, at EDMS UCSP. And remember, a certificate for any student listening to us, to, listening to this presentation, interested in studying at either FH Ioannium, Westphalian University, or interested in the GAIP program, you know, a, a certificate from us, from the Language Center of the Universidad Católica San Pablo, could take you a long way to opening those doors, not to showing um, your level of English. So thank you very much, everyone, um, for your questions. Um, it's been a pleasure for me to um, moderate this event and I hope that everyone has found this enriching, interesting, learned any new information and has feels inspired to apply to um, one of these programs. So it's, it'll be um, goodbye from me and I'll, I'll hand over the stage to, um, to Marie Lejandra. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, and thank you everyone for coming here. You're gonna have, I'm sure you're gonna have questions. You're gonna talk to your family and, and please tell them that this is happening in Universidad Católica San Pablo, that you have all these wonderful experience. Take advantage of these opportunities. Be, uh, be like Alberto or Edwin. Uh, they, they didn't do anything extraordinary. They are not the rector's sons or nephew or whatever. <laughs> They are just regular students that they are eager to learn and to have international experiences. So please, please uh, uh, be part uh, of this. Uh, every time you see an opportunity to apply, apply. And wonderful things will happen. Thank you, Nadine, Ingerin, Manfred, 
Alberto, um, Edwin, and of course, Emily, and have a wonderful afternoon or night. Uh, guten Abend. Thank you, Maria. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.